praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Welcome to Growing Together Ministries with my wife Lisa and myself on this very exciting Wednesday night from a husky North Carolina. We say good evening to our friends of the Growing Together Ministry Church in Williamston, North Carolina. And we say good evening all over the world for Jesus Christ. Let's begin tonight by going to God in prayer and asking God's blessings on our Bible study on this Wednesday night. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your divine protection on our lives. We thank you, Father, for how you look out after us every minute of every hour of every day. Lord, we pray that tonight that this Bible study would speak into the lives of hundreds, thousands throughout the world. Lord, this is your Bible study. And Father, we pray for those that are in fear tonight. We pray, dear God, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that you would touch those that are mentally in fear right now. God, I pray that you would deliver them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For those that are watching that are unsaved, unsure of their salvation, dear God, I pray that you would save them tonight, that they would confess all their sins before you and before the cross of Calvary and ask you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to come into their lives. Thank you for this Wednesday. Thank you for the people that are watching in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, forgive us of all our sins. Amen and amen. amen. We turn now to Ephesians chapter 1, and my wife is going to go back and read verses 1 through 14 to bring us up to date on our Bible study tonight which will begin at verse 15. Lisa. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at, are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Jesus Christ, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to, to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth, even in him, in whom also have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things after the counsel of his own will, 
that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, unto the redemption of our precious possession, unto the praise of his glory. And that was through verse 14 of Ephesians chapter 1. The reading of the word of God is essential, essential to you and I and my wife growing in God. We do not take lightly or try to rush through the Word of God. And as believers, we know that as we read the Word of God, God speaks to us. And this is the Apostle Paul speaking to the church at Ephesus. And we're going to begin tonight our Bible study here in verse 15. Wherefore I also... After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. Day by day faith exercised in the Lord Jesus for daily living. So reading the word of God is an exercise. You have to start out slowly. You cannot just go in one day and read one full book of the Bible. It takes time to build up your speed in God in reading the Word. You may only be able to read two or three chapters as we give daily on the daily Bible reading. But at least you do that and you exercise your ability of first reaching for your Bible and then opening your Bible and then taking and having the patience to read your Bible. So we exercise this in our daily living unto the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And love unto all the saints. It is only those who do not depend on the finished work of the cross who lack in love. Those that do not completely have their faith in the cross of Calvary, they have a hard time loving their family, and they especially have a hard time loving others. You must be completely in to the finished work of Christ on the cross and have your faith in the cross of Calvary in order to be successful and be able to love other people. Verse 16 of Ephesians chapter 1. Cease not to give thanks for you. Is used some 23 times in the Paul's epistles. Cease not to give thanks for you. We are to give thanks for the people we worship with. We are to be thankful for our leadership. We are to be thankful for those that do not serve in leadership. That is how we grow and mature in God. making mention of you and my prayers. A habit of the apostle, his intercessory prayer life, that we are commanded not only by the apostle Paul, by the Holy Spirit, which is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to pray one for another. I must pray for you, even if I've never physically seen you, it is my responsibility to pray for you. 
It is my wife's responsibility that we are to do intercessory prayer for one another that we may stay connected with God. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, refers to our Lord in his humanity as worshiping and being obedient to God the Father. Jesus was not alone in this pathway. He had a Father. And the Holy Spirit worked through the Father to the Son to bring about the great works that go on in our lives every day. We are dependent on the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We cannot separate the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We must believe and have faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. The knowledge of Christ, which we receive through the Word. The knowledge of Christ. Do you want to be more like Christ? How do you become more like Christ is reading the word of God. But you must exercise that in your daily life. Enables the Holy Spirit to increase our wisdom and our revelation from God. The more you read the Word of God, the more you are committed to praying every day, God will speak to you. If you say in your life today, Pastor David, I've never heard God speak. Are you reading the Word of God? And then being quiet so he can speak to you through the Holy Spirit. Because believe me tonight, believe me tonight, God will speak to you in a soft voice. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened could be translated the eyes of your heart having been enlightened with the present result that they are in the state of being magnified. We need a complete trust and open eyes to hear from God. And our open eyes, Lisa, are through faith in what I cannot see. That I have faith in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that I've never seen. You've never seen. Mm -hmm. But as we build our faith, our eyes become open. And not only does the Father start to speak to you, into your mind, you will start to see things. Things will be revealed to you. And then you'll say, oh, wow. Lights start to come on. Because you took your faith to another level in God. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. In a sense, actually points to what the hope really is. We have 
hope tonight. I'm not depending on our home that we have here. I'm not depending on my vehicles. I'm not depending on our jobs. I'm depending and we are depending on the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is our hope tonight. And trust me when I say this again, dear brothers and sisters, God is real. God is real. God will open doors that were shut and you thought it was all over for you because you put your hope in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You, we may or some may be saying we're going through a crisis right now. I, as I told some people today at work, it's like a season. Seasons come and go. This crisis is going to leave in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we're going to be better servants of God on the other side of what man calls a crisis. Because we're going to have a testimony from this crisis because our hope was in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. This is down in verse 18 of Ephesians chapter 1. Speaks now not of the saints' inheritance, but rather God's inheritance. The saints are that inheritance. We are what the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, what it was all about, it was about us. Before we were even born, we were on the mind of the Father. Before you even thought about, before your name was given to you, before your birth or after your birth, if they took a little time to think about it, God already had you on his mind. You are a part of his inheritance tonight. You are special to God tonight. Will you receive that tonight? You are a part of his inheritance. You're not alone tonight. Glory to God. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe? Power to live a holy life. You say, Pastor, I don't understand that. I've stayed with you to this point. But you talking about living a holy life? You can, through the blood of Jesus Christ at Calvary's cross. Because when sin enters your mind, the thought of negativity enters your mind, you exercise your brain to rebuke sin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You exercise your mind. We're only going through circumstances in life. It's not permanent, dear brothers and sisters. Receive that tonight. Nothing is permanent. God is developing my wife, God is developing me. God is developing you tonight. You may say, well, I messed up at 1.30 this afternoon, Pastor. 
I said something to hurt somebody's feelings. I did something I shouldn't have done. Did you exercise your faith in God to say, God, forgive me. I go to the altar of God daily and throughout the day. The altar is by faith in the cross of Calvary. And I ask God to forgive me as God, as my wife Lisa asks God to forgive her. We're not perfect. But we exercise our right in God to live a holy life. I want to say that again. We exercise our right in God as a believer, as the Holy Spirit lives within us, to overcome and live a holy life. Are you exercising you're right tonight, or are you complaining and feeling sorry for yourself? That loses your victory tonight. According to the working of his mighty power. It works for us according to our faith in the finished work of the cross. You say, preacher man, you're talking a whole lot about the finished work of cross. Of the cross. Folks, that's the reason for the Bible. I must preach the cross and teach the cross every time I come before you. Every time my wife comes before you. We must teach the cross of Calvary. There's no easy way, but we must come to the cross where the blood was shed for the remission of my sins. Hallelujah. Verse 20 of Ephesians chapter 1. Which he, God the Father, wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Which he did by the power of of the Holy Spirit. There is power, dear brothers and sisters, in the Holy Spirit that is in my wife's life, that is in my life, and in your life tonight. The problem is we don't exercise the power. We, we don't see miracles like we heard of years ago or we read about in books because believers are on the milk of the word now. It doesn't take much to get a believer mad and upset with individuals now because they're not soaking themselves in the word of God. You must soak yourself in the Word of God. You can't spend 10 minutes in the Bible per day and five hours watching the television. You won't get the victory. The television will consume your mind. Hallelujah. And set him at his own right hand in heavenly places refers to the highest place of honor. Jesus sits on the right side of the Father. And authority means that the sacrifice of Christ was totally accepted. What he did at the cross, the Father was pleased with his Son. And, when, and while he sits at the right hand of the Father, Lisa, tonight we have the Holy Spirit working in us right now. Let's just stop for a minute. Is the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now?
the Holy Spirit is bringing you to a new level in God tonight. Folks, the Holy Spirit is dealing with my wife, is dealing with me right now. You can't read the Word of God and not feel the presence of God. Can I say that to you again? You can't read the Word of God and not feel the presence of God. If you don't feel the presence of God when you read the Word of God, there's unconfessed sin in your life. There are things in your life that are not right with God. And, and we get a lot of thank yous for just telling it like it is and being serious. And then we get a lot of flow back and getting upset with us. But when we stand before the Father, our hands will be clean. Because we did as God commanded us to do. We didn't do as people wanted us to do. We were led by the Holy Spirit, not led by man. Hallelujah. Far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion. Proclaims the exalted position of Christ. You are exalted tonight. Verse 21, Ephesians chapter 1. You are exalted. If you're sitting in your recliner, you're sitting in your best setting chair, you're sitting on your couch, or some of you may be sitting on the floor, or you may be sitting at your kitchen table. You are exalted in God tonight. You are exalted in God if you are a believer tonight. Uh, receive that tonight. If you receive nothing else tonight, uh, receive that you are exalted in God. You are special to God tonight. I claim that over your life in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are exalted tonight because you serve Jesus. It's going to be all right. Hallelujah. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Christ is given this exalted position and will retain it forever because of the cross and because you and I repented of our sins and are exercising, exercising our faith in God by reading the Word of God every day, praying every day. We're winners. We're winners. Even when people try to hurt your feelings. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22. And has put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things. The church. I want to stop right there for a moment. He is the absolute ultimate authority. Because of the cross. And Jesus is head of the church. Let me say that again to you. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Not Pastor Lisa or Pastor David or Bishop. But Jesus Christ is head of the church. Verse 23 of Ephesians chapter 1. Which is his body. The church has its source of life in who tonight? In Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's no other source but Jesus tonight. Not the building, not the pretty padded pews, but 
Jesus Christ tonight. He is the church tonight. The fullness of him that fills all in all. As Christ was the true Israel and is the true man, he is also the true church. So, what is our church tonight? It is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why I can smile and my beautiful wife can smile into this camera tonight and talk to you. We have no fear. If we were to die tonight, we'll wake up in glory just like you will. We have no fear. Our faith is rooted in God tonight, in the true church, which is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To my church family, Growing Together Ministry Church in Williamston, thank you. My wife, And myself feel your prayers. We love you folks. And even love the ones that don't want me to love them anymore. I just tell it like it is. I'm called of God to proclaim Jesus Christ not people. And I will tell you this, when the time comes that my emphasis is on pleasing people, I'll walk out of the ministry. My emphasis is doing, and my wife's emphasis is doing what God tells us to do. We love you in Martin County tonight. We pray for you every day day, every day, and all across northeastern North Carolina, from Williamston to Windsor to a Husky, we love you. We love all of you tonight. You are important to us. Without you, we are nothing. And without Christ, we're absolutely nothing. It takes people connected together. Connected together. I, I, I see so many of you online tonight, and I see your faces. And if I start mentioning names, I'm going to mess up. Then somebody's feelings is going to get hurt because why didn't he mention your name? But I see every one of you tonight and I want to reach out and I want to hug you because you know I love hugging. I love you tonight in Williamston, North Carolina. And I love and we love people all over the world. Growing Together Ministries is in 24 countries of the world because we love people. We at Growing Together Ministry Church in Williamston do not have tunnel vision. We are boots on the ground for God. We're sharing the Word of God. We're teaching the Word of God because we want to see the unsaved saved. And I cannot say it enough tonight. Pray for Pastor Lisa. Pray for Pastor David. And another heartfelt prayer tonight is Pastor Larry Lilly. He's ready to come home. Pray that there will be an open seat on a plane. 
because there's already been two or three planes left Nigeria sponsored by the United States bringing people back to the United States that are United States citizens that Pastor Larry Lilly will be able to get on one of these planes and come home. He is a part of this ministry, Pastor Larry Lilly and his wife. And we pray for them daily. We pray for them. Will you pray for them? Praise the Lord, a mighty man of God, Pastor Larry Lilly of Williamston, North Carolina. Honey, you have anything to add tonight? Uh, just as we were going over these scriptures, something that really hit me, it said, uh, which God the Father wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world but also in the world to come, and put all things under his feet. Anything that's named has to come bow to the name of Jesus. That's cancer, disease, COVID-19. Everything has Amen. to bow to the name of Jesus. Amen. I can remember my mom was battling cancer. You know, I thought, you know, I thought cancer, cancer, that's the worst word you'll ever hear. And then the Lord showed me that no, the worst word you'll ever hear is depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. So everything comes under his feet. He has power over it all. We got to raise Jesus up. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And just as Moses I lifted the serpent up in the desert, we lift Jesus up and the diseases are healed. Glory. And, and we're delivered. So I just encourage you to lift up Jesus. Lift up Jesus. Lift up Jesus. Lift up Jesus. He's the one. Hallelujah. He can handle everything. Just lift him up. Hallelujah. And all things will come under his feet, and they have to bow. In the name of Jesus, just turn to him, trust him, love him, and he will deliver you. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Father, we come before you. We pray for those that have, are with us live right now in the hundreds that will watch this program in the next day or two. Lord, we pray in the mighty name of the Father right now. For those that are sitting alone in an apartment or in a house right now. For those that are sitting with someone. We pray God in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You would bring deliverance to that apartment. To that house. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bring deliverance to their family members. Dear God. Shake them loose for you tonight, God. For those that are hurting tonight because of things they've done to themselves, I pray, God, that you would deliver them tonight in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, lift these people up. In Williamston, Jamesville, Hamilton, Hallelujah, Windsor, a Husky, Raleigh, uh, Richmond, Virginia, Kenya, Africa, Montego Bay, Jamaica, California, Texas. Lift folks up in Georgia tonight, our friends in Georgia, God. Lift them up tonight. Encourage them in you tonight, Father. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God, we give our lives to you. We surrender all tonight. We repent of all of our sins right now. Pray this with me. You repent of all of your sins. And God, I want you to guide me. I accept the blood of Calvary's cross. I need a closer walk with you, God. 
Claim it right now, dear brothers and sisters, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is setting folks free right now. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is moving uh, across this world right now through this broadcast. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you for the healings that are taking place, the miracles that are taking place in the physical bodies of folks watching this broadcast right now. God let them know, Pastor Lisa and I love them, that we love them and you love them tonight and we are praying for them. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I just say amen. Mm -hmm. Folks, if you know me, we don't plan no Bible studies. We don't plan no preaching. If God doesn't give it to us, we shut up. And my folks at Growing Together Ministry Church in Williamston know I'll slap myself beside my face and shut up. When God says shut up, I shut up. But God has moved here tonight. Will you accept what God has done in your life tonight through the reading of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23? Will you accept this? And go back after we go off the air and read this again. We're in this together. Let me share a little note and then we'll close tonight. This past weekend, we actually did a debut on YouTube. We've been on YouTube since last April, and I was just putting videos up there from the Sunday broadcast. But this past Saturday, we started using the YouTube channel for reaching people, people. And let me share this with you. This past Sunday's message that was boots on the ground reached over 150,000 people in the state of Virginia. 150,000 folks were reached. You say, Pastor David, did all of them click in? No. How were they reached? They saw the Growing Together ministry banner. They saw the message title. And they saw my wife and me. That's a start. A, a little over a thousand or so, 1,200, they actually watched the broadcast in the state of Virginia. We do one state each time. Pray for our YouTube channel. We're just getting started. We're reaching the unreached through Google. Not only Facebook, we're on Twitter. We're on the local radio station here in Ahoski. Five or six times a day, we have a one-minute message to the people. God is doing a great work through this ministry. Partner with us through prayer. We had this past Sunday, and then I'm going to leave you. I'm getting all excited now. The Holy Spirit's moving. I'm ready to preach, but this is just Bible teaching tonight. We had over 8,000 people watch this past Sunday's message in Tanzania, Africa. Over 8,000 folks viewed boots on the ground in Tanzania, Africa. This past Sunday. God's doing a great work. Thank you tonight. 
have anything to say, honey? Because we need to stop. We're moving. But go ahead. You got anything no. to say, honey? No. Nope. We okay. love you tonight. We're we're losing time. Have a great Wednesday night. I love y'all. Love you. Have a great night. God bless you.